Hello everyone, welcome to Bedroom Fire Fishing and my first actual fishing video. Um, today we're talking about late spring, early summer muskies, kind of after they moved out of the shallow, spawning happened a couple weeks ago, kind of things to what to look for. Um, one thing I'm specifically talking about is how to troll for them and why you should troll for them over say casting. Um, casting is an awesome way to target these um, post spawn muskies. Uh, they're trying to transition out to that deeper water. Um, the primary reason for them transitioning out to this deeper water is water temperatures. Um, as the water warms up, um, they spawn at 62 degrees, and as the lake continues to warm up, they start to shift out to that cooler water that you'd find out deep. Um, they can't handle anything really above 70 degrees. Obviously they can, but they prefer to sit at like that 68 degree mark. So the best way to find them is to kind of chase that 68 degree water. So as water temps now are up to 69 degrees, um, they're kind of pushed out of the shallows and now they're out in that 17 foot range. Um, there's also something else that's going on way out in those deeps and we're looking at bait fish. Um, I'm here in western Wisconsin, northwestern Wisconsin and uh, primary forage for them are suckers. Um, the lake I'm on unfortunately doesn't have all that many so I'm not chasing suckers but I'm chasing the sunnies and the crappies. Uh, the sunnies and crappies just finished spawning a couple weeks ago and they're also, like the muskies, starting to head out back to the deeper water. Um, the sunnies right now are sitting about a foot and a half below the surface chasing mayflies. Um, we have a mayfly hatch here right now. Um, people in Minnesota that are also dealing with mayfly hatches are probably thinking trolling for muskies out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, that's just not something we have because we don't have those cisco populations. So we know they're out deep, we know they're eating sunfish, so we're going to kind of think about for what we're going to target them with. Um, I like to target them trolling because casting over deep water is productive, but I just don't seem to hook up on fish because I throw a lot of bulldogs. Um, I move fish all the time. Like this morning I casted for an hour and I had high 40 inch fish come chase, but I never get them to eat. And I've seen that year in, year in and year out. So what I do instead is troll these areas. The benefit of trolling is number one, you cover a lot more water because I'm moving three, three and a half, four miles an hour. And you kind of get a wider spread to cover an area. Um, and it's more of a reaction bite and a little less of a finesse bite and they don't seem to be into that finesse bite right now. So when I'm trolling, um, I have a few options. Um, first, where in the water column am I trolling? Um, I'd mentioned that the sunfish are only a foot and a half below the surface, so you'd imagine that I'd probably want lures that run just a foot and a half below the surface. So things I kind of do to do that is something like a phantom hex. This is a lot larger than most things I'd use in Wisconsin. But the benefit is, is it only where I can put it on a planer board, throw it way off on the side of the boat, and it runs only a few um, inches below the surface. Other things I'm trying to do is match profiles of the lures. Um, one thing I really like are super shads, which the video I'm showing after this will have this exact lure in it. And the benefit of the super shad is profile. Looking at the profile, it's about the same size as the average sunfish in the lake. Another thing about the super shad is it wobbles. It's, not, it's a tight pattern, but it's not all that fast. Something like this Bagley Bango that I also use this time of year has a really fast pattern so it's going to get those really active fish but right now the fish are not that active so I want something that's a little slower to wobble but not quite as slow as something like a Phantom Hex. Another lure I really like to use this time of year is a Joe Booker's Depth Raider. Um, one thing about this that's super nice is again it doesn't have all that fast a pattern. It's a little slower to wobble but it's not quite the big stick baits that a lot of people troll in the fall. Um, so what I'm targeting, I mentioned that I'm high in the water column with planter boards, so those are the ones I put way out. I put one out in the middle of 30 feet of water, 25, and I also put one really shallow, say like 10 feet of water. The lures that I'm running underneath the boat, I'm running a lot deeper. Um, these super shads, I can get them to dive about 12 feet if I'm using, say, 50 pound braid. If I'm using 100 pound braid, I might only get 10 feet out of them. But I'm really r ideally running them just above the weeds. Um, when you troll over a fish, if it's sitting a foot below the surface, you're probably going to knock it down. Um, swim a little deeper, so I want something that's also going to be deeper where those fish are. Another lure like this bag of leaf bait, another one can get it a little deeper up to 15 feet, so I might drop this one right at the bottom to get those fish that are really inactive. Overall, what I'm doing is I'm trolling the outside weed edge in 17 feet of water. If you see a bunch of panfish diving below the surface as you're driving, you're probably in the right spot, especially if it's a sunny day and you have polarized glasses, it's pretty easy to see them. 
Um, trolling, three to six miles an hour, um, 3.6 miles an hour. Um, people range between three and four. I've tried anywhere and just kind of my average is 3.6. Um, I mentioned like time to fish. I really like to fish when it's windy. First off, can't hear your boats. So that's one of the benefits. Another thing that's really important when I, or one thing I'm looking for is moon phase. So that moon rise, moon set, or moon overhead. The fish in the video today happened to hit four minutes after moon was underfoot. So your major period of the day. Um, one thing about this is the fish are more likely to feed at these times. So definitely make sure you target those times. Other than that, um, make sure when you're trolling that you have your drag set a little looser than you would have when you're casting. Um, you're moving fast enough that the, the hook themselves, but you don't want to be moving fast, or you want your drag tight enough that you rip the hooks out. Other than that, if you're going to try it, good luck. Cosmo, back up. We got going here, Al. Huh? We got going. Cosmo, come on, back up. Back up! Hazel back up. Hey, come here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sit. That's a bit. Eh. And there you have it, musky trolling. Yes, probably noticed there were a few things going wrong in that video. The reel did fall off the rod. Yes, when we tried to net it, it ended up at the bottom of the bag and I had to reach out of the side of the boat to grab it. But more importantly, we got the fish in the boat. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. Uh, I'll be playing more videos to come. Expect something along the lines of probably panfish next. Uh, good luck. I hope trolling works well for you and stay tuned for our next video.